Hello and good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, welcome to another Facebook Live. If this is the first time you're watching Facebook Live with us, my name's Craig and I teach at mansioningles.com, which is a free website to improve your English. And we also have a podcast that I do with my friend Reza at inglespodcast.com. And the name of the podcast is Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. I want to apologize for not being here on Facebook for the last two weeks. I had a slight family personal thing, so that's why I wasn't here. But back this week and happy to say with, let me get this right, with um, my good friend Lynn, who is also, <laughs> <laughs> is also an English teacher. I've known Lynn for a long time. She's a, an excellent English teacher, a fantastic teacher, and also a wonderful person. So I'm very pleased to have her with us this week. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Craig. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so Lynn has a wonderful website. Um, let me get this up here. Putitlikethis.com. So if you are looking for some private teaching and coaching, Lynn is definitely the person to talk to. And we'll speak a little bit more about that later. Today, we're speaking about crime vocabulary. And hopefully, we'll be able to help you a little with some crime words. Let's just have a quick look and see who's with us. Victor is here. Hello, Victor. Nice to see you. And Gemma, of course. There you are, Gemma. Thanks for coming in again. Um, always good to see you. So let's begin um, if it's the first time you're watching um, the replay, then welcome to you too, if you're watching after the fact. Margot has joined us, so hello to you as well, Margot. And we'll begin with, with a quiz. We're going to begin with a quiz this week. And there are no prizes, but you do have the satisfaction of knowing that your vocabulary is really, really good if you know the words we're going to describe. So we're going to describe some vocabulary connected to crime and you need to write in the chat box the name name the crime and the criminal so what crime are we describing and what's the name of the criminal lynn would you like to start us off with the first definition please all right i think this one's easy right so this is when you kill somebody on purpose or if you kill somebody deliberately. Let's okay. see what we've got. So you remember you need to write the crime and the criminal. So while you're thinking, while you're writing, a quick hello to Jahir, who's with us from El Salvador, and Alejandro. Hi. Letty's with us. Erica, Bea, Beatriz, hello. Christine and Francesca. Wow, so many people. It's lovely to see you all. Ah, we've so, got an answer from Christian. Yeah. We've got an answer from Christian, and he's correct. Fantastic. And he's correct from he's got it. First. <laughs> so that's the answer. Murder is the crime, and murderer is the person. That's and the collocation with that is to commit. So you commit murder um, when you kill someone. Okay, let's go to the next one. That's very good. Let's see if you know the next one. This is where you force someone to have sex. So you have sex with someone against their oh. will. What's the crime and the name of the criminal? Write that in the chat room, please. When you force someone to have sex and you abuse them sexually, what's the crime? What's the criminal? Any answers, Lynn? Uh, so far, no. I can just see murder and murderers, but that was for the first question. Yeah. Yeah, it takes a while, but well done yeah, if you yeah. if you did get that. It takes a while. For ah, you to... okay. Anna's Anna's got the crime. Well done, Anna. Yeah, the crime is rape. Um, Luthma has said violation, but in actual fact, we don't use that word in English. Violation. We can have a you can have a violation of your rights. So if somebody um, is 
is not following the human rights that you have. We talk about human rights violations, so, so crimes against your human rights, but we don't use it for rape, okay? So if somebody forces you to have sex without your, um, without your agreement, then that is rape. And the person who does it, uh, have we, yeah, Christine's got that one. Rapist. Well done, Christine. Well done, Rapist. Christine. Yeah, Rapist. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well done. Um, Christian's also said sexual, I think he wanted to say assault, assaulter, but we don't usually use, we, we say sexual assault as the crime, but we wouldn't say assaulter, would we, Craig, for a person who does it? No, no, not for the for, for the criminal. It's sexual assault is a crime. Um, um, uh, uh, what would the criminal be? A person who commits sexual assault mm -hmm. would be a would criminal, be a criminal. A would criminal, yeah, would be a criminal. Uh, think, so. uh -huh. Yep. But rapist is the one that we um, we were expecting for that one. Yeah. Yes. So I yeah, think. that's what we wanted. So more people are joining us. A quick hello to Yabber, who's joining us again. Hi. Um, yes, I'm sorry I wasn't here for the last two weeks, Javier, but I'm happy. I'm happy to be back again. Um, Mariela from Argentina is with us, and JC Alvaro from Peru. Wow. Mm -hmm. And Jacqueline and Angel, and welcome to all of you. Okay, whose turn is it? Is it me now? Yeah, no, it's me. It's me. Okay, right, it's you. so here we are. So setting fire to a building or setting fire to cars or property on purpose, again, deliberately. So when you set fire to a building, a car or property on purpose, what is the crime and what is the criminal? Okay. While we're waiting there, Craig, for people mm -hmm. in their answers while you're thinking, maybe we should also mention that with crimes, Often uh, we use the passive for the victim. So we say to be. So often we, we, we're looking at the vocabulary for the crime and the criminal, the nouns, but often there are verbs too. So there's a verb to murder and there's a verb to rape. And if you're looking at the victim's point of view, you would say I, he got murdered or he got, she got raped or he got raped. Yeah. So we use the passive construction. You can say be raped, she was raped, or the more informal way is to say to get raped. He got raped or she got murdered, okay? And that, that's with a lot of the vocabulary that we're going to use, that we often use the passive, yeah? Okay, I think we got the answer. Who did you yeah. see first, Craig? I missed it. I can see uh, well, it's it? it's it's because of the delay. Sometimes we had a competition. Oh. Some regular <laughs> people remember three weeks or four weeks ago, we had a competition and people were arguing about who put the answer first. But oh, so <laughs> I've got to be really careful. It looks like it's Christine. Yeah. Who's got right. the answer? Do you agree with that? I think yes, Christine I was first. And the answer yeah. is arson. Arson and arsonist. Uh-huh. Yeah, my football team is Arsenal. Some of you who like football <laughs> might know that Arsenal is a famous London football team. So if you're having trouble remembering arson and arsonist for fire, setting fire to something, because it's not connected to the Spanish word, which is piro something, piro mania mm. o algo así. Mm -hmm. So just remember the Arsenal football stadium on fire. <laughs> arsenal arson if you make those connections with sounds of words it makes it easier to remember if you have that picture in your mind of a word and connect it to an image however silly however stupid it really does help you to remember the word so remember arsenal the stadium on fire and hopefully you'll remember arson and uh, arsonist arsonist it's a strange word isn't it it's a, it sound, strange. It's a strange word uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, next one. Okay, your turn now. Your turn. So the What's next word turn? you have to write. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that the way? <laughs> word, the next word you have to write, let's see. This is where you threaten to reveal someone's secrets unless they pay you. I can give you the Spanish word. It's chantaje. Oh. So what's chantaje in English? And what is the name of the person who commits 
chantaje. I love this word. I like the way the word's made. I think it's really nice. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you why when we show it up. So when, we, when we show it on the screen, I'll ask you why you like it. Yeah. Okay, any answers Ro, yet? Ro has said that uh, the person who does arson is Piro Mano. Okay. The word in Spanish there, so that's good. Esther Thank you for that. It. Esther. Piro. Piro Mano, yeah. Uh -huh. Esther's got it there. She's Esther's got, got the it. Crime. She's got the crime. And now we need the person. So the person who commits the crime. Christine's got it. The person well done. who commits the crime. Well Do done, Christine. Blackmail. Chantaje is blackmail, and the person is a blackmail. And why do you like the word so much? Because it's a uh, like it because it's just like a color and it's like an email. So it's not an email. It's not a red mail. It's not a white mail. But it's a blackmail. <laughs> I don't know. I like it. <laughs> if somebody's like trying, you know, I you see on the on the um, on the crime shows when they send the letter but they don't want to use handwriting and they cut out the letters from the newspaper, from the newspaper. and stick it and it's all black. <laughs> so it's like a black letter, blackmail, yeah? That's and true. They want, so, you to, they want you to pay money to, to do So again, something. that's a powerful way to remember it. If you remember mm -hmm. Lynn's example of cutting out black text from the newspaper to get the money, you mm -hmm. can maybe remember blackmail. Okay. Blackmail. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, my turn? Yes. Yep. All right. Now, I think we've seen this word because somebody thought it was this word earlier. This is when you give money or you grant favors to influence another person's decisions or behavior. So, for example, this happens a lot, maybe. Um, you want to persuade somebody to pretend that they haven't seen something. And then maybe you want to give them money and they will tell a lie. Or maybe it's a person in power or in government and you try to give them money so that they will have, uh, they'll influence, it will influence their decisions. Yeah, maybe they will give you the contract to build something big. Or maybe they want to pass an exam and they give some money to their English teacher to get a good oh. mark. I've always hoped for that, but nobody's ever <laughs> Has anybody ever tried for you? <laughs> Not in Spain, but when I was teaching abroad, uh, one student's father came um, to a meeting and did offer me money to give his son a good grade. Really? Yes. <laughs> Right. And his Good. son was terrible at English, wow. um, and I didn't accept it. Oh, well, but, you, you uh, shouldn't give the answer, because later I'm going to ask you, what crimes have you committed? Okay. <laughs> I have committed a couple of crimes. I'll tell you later. This now, this work. word that we're looking for, there's no noun for the person who commits the crime, okay. is there? It's just there the is. name of the crime. Mm -hmm. But there are two verbs that we need. But maybe you want to tell, because I think people have found the answer now. Okay, that's the answer. Bribery. Bribery. And there are two verbs that go with that. Somebody who gives a bribe. So you can use the word noun. So that you can be a person who gives a bribe. You're the person doing it. And you can be also, it's also against the law, the person who takes the bribe. So there's like those two verbs, give a bribe and take a bribe. And they're both criminal acts, usually, I yeah. think. Yeah. And the verb, of course, is to bribe someone. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So well done if you got that. Yeah. Okay, great. Ooh, somebody said, Ava said, ooh, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> or oh. <laughs> Saborno, yeah, as, uh -huh. as Luth Luthma said. Yeah, Saborno Luthma, very good. I think Ava must have been surprised that somebody offered you a bribe, Craig. Oh. That's why she went, oh. <laughs> well, it only happened once, and it was a very long time ago, and I didn't accept okay. it. So my conscience is clear. I can oh. sleep well at night. Okay. Right. Uh, your turn now, yeah? 
before Yabba says it's quite popular here in Mexico. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should be teaching in Mexico, Yabba. Maybe I'd, <laughs> I'd have a bigger house if I was teaching in Mexico. Maybe. <laughs> is it me? Is it me or you? It's you. Is it me? Okay. Where yeah. are we? I'm lost. Oh, here we are. This yeah. is where um a person or people, usually terrorists, take control of an aeroplane. What's the name of the crime? What's the name of the person who commits the crime? So you must have seen films where the terrorists have a gun, maybe a plastic gun that they've brought through illegally on the plane, and then they go into the cockpit at the front of the plane, and they say, we want 10 million pounds and take us to whatever country. Mm -hmm. What's the crime? And what is the criminal? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's Jack, Jacqueline says it's a terrorist. It is a terrorist, but the crime has a special name. Cello has it. Cello has it. Yes, Cello said hi, Jack. Well done, Cello. And the person, do you know Cello, the person who commits the crime? There she is. Hi, Jacka. Hi, Jacka. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let me find it here so you can check. Hijacking. Hijacking and hijack. Now, that's well done. Another lovely word to remember because I have this vision that somebody is in the plane and they stand up and they go, Hijack. Hijack. <laughs> Give me the plane. Hi and the pilot, his name is Jack and he's got a gun. <laughs> exactly. Hijack. Hijack, this is my Give me gun. The plane. <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy way so. to remember it. Yeah, these are lovely words. I think the, the words with crimes are really, really interesting. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's a hijack. Uh -huh. And also, you can actually, Craig, in South Africa, when I went to South Africa, it was very popular to hijack cars. Yeah. Planes. So sometimes mm -hmm. cars can be hijacked too. And I think and that's you, called a carjack. Carjacking, exactly. Carjacking. Carjacking as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that you, they put a gun and you have to give them the keys and get out of the car. And that happened to me hijacked. actually. I have been hijacked, uh, carjacked. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Where? It was in Venezuela. Wow. On holiday many years. I didn't tell you this story. Oh. A long time ago, I was hijacked and they stole money, passports, cameras from everybody in the Jeep. Wow. Yeah. It was uh, very, very scary. I very, bet. very scary. Uh -huh. Anyway. I'm glad. We, I, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. I'm still here. So, hi, yeah. Jack. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's hi, Jack from Eva. <laughs> Great. Okay. Is it my turn now? That's yeah. you now, yeah. All right. So, this is... When you don't take a plane, but you take away a person by force. And then when you take the person, you demand money from people who love them. And you say, um, if you give me the money, I'll let you have the person back alive. Right. So you don't take a car or a plane, but you take a person. Yeah. And we already have answers. Have um, correct answers. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Uh -huh. And that, Monica has it, and oh. Yabber has it as well. And yeah. there we have kidnapping and kidnapper, which is also a nice sounding word. Kid, uh -huh. like child, and nap, like to sleep. Sleep. Kidnapper. But it has no relation to the activity. No connection. No. No. No activity. No relation at all. No. But it's a it's a strange word, kidnapping. Right. Okay. The next the next yeah. words we have for you are very um, current. They're in the news a lot. Um, and this is where there's a very violent, noisy public disturbance. Now we've seen this recently, especially in North America, in mm -hmm. cities like Chicago, New York. Uh, there's been a, an ongoing, which means continually happening, of this in Portland. Um, and it's when people get very, very angry and they demonstrate in a noisy and often violent way. And it usually involves the police. It may even involve the army against the demonstrators. So what's the name of that crime and the people who commit the crime? 
Uh, Christina uh, has got Christina's it. got it. Yeah, she's got it. Where is she? Yep, she's Christine's got one. it. Yeah. Right and rioter. Well, well done, Christine. Christine. <laughs> There's the Black Lives Matter protests that have been very popular in North America because of George Floyd. Yes. Um, just looking for there it is the card riot. Be careful of the pronunciation. Ri riot, riot, and rioter, rioter. Rioter. Yeah, it has a y sound in it that isn't there in the letter, is it? Y for yes, and we say mm -hmm. riot. 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 No, riot. Okay. Um, my turn. Your turn, Lynn. Right. This is a lovely word. I love the sound of this word. Yeah, me right. too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard one for foreign speakers to pronounce, though. So, but we'll practice that in a moment. So this is when, for example, imagine you are in a prison, for example, and people want to, if you're in the prison as a prisoner, and then maybe you want to get some items that you that are not allowed in the prison. So people take things into the prison secretly, uh, or they might be taking things out of the prison secretly, um, and it's not allowed. So it's moving goods secretly. In many years ago, like hundreds of years ago, they used to do this with alcohol. I think, because alcohol was banned in some countries and then pirates used to come and they used to leave the alcohol on beaches secretly mm -hmm. at night and then people would take the alcohol elsewhere. And I can remember years ago when there was a limit on the number of bottles of alcohol that you could yeah. bring into the UK from another country. So if you had more than one or two bottles of spirits... Uh -huh. and you brought in more, you were committing this crime with That's cigarettes right. and tobacco as well. Cigarettes, Luthmas just said, or cigarettes. This crime was with cigarettes. Good. Esther, well done. Uh -huh. And Christine also has it. Yeah, yeah exactly. So and it was no, cello. the word. Uh -huh. Cello the word, as well. The word is quite difficult, right? Can you put it up, Craig? Yeah, I'm just looking Savannah. for it. Uh, too many words. Here we are. Right. So the word, the pronunciation is smuggling smuggling and the word is and the other word is smuggler and i think the problem that causes the problem with the pronunciation is the u because you want to say smuggling but it's not smuggling it's like a it's a uh sound smuggling like up like up uh. or mother <laughs> it's the same uh, sound smuggling and smuggler uh -huh. And the other reason that it's difficult is because you've got the G and the L. So you've got a consonant cluster. So we have to say smuggling. We, we actually put an uh in the middle to make it easier. Smuggling and smuggle. Mm -hmm. Do you like that word? I like that word. I do like that word. I like saying it. Smuggling. 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 And in Harry Potter, if there's anybody who's a Harry Potter fan, do you like Harry Potter, Craig? I I don't I'm not a, a huge fan, but I've read the books and I've well, seen the films. So she created the word for non-magic people, and the non-magic people people are called muggles. Also, if you just add an it's S to muggles, you get smuggler. Smuggler, almost. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Very okay. cool. All right, then your turn. Okay, so. Um, the next, the next one is quite similar to smuggler and smuggling, but it's when you're, you're trading and selling and dealing in um, people, for example, something illegal like people or drugs. So it's when you're buying and selling something illegally, usually drugs. Um, these days, it's often in the news because of illegally bringing people into a country or maybe using them as slave labor or prostitution. So it's trading and dealing with something illegal. Mm -hmm. And the thing is illegal, isn't it? Because with yes. smuggling, the alcohol and the cigarettes, they're not illegal. But for your word, the thing that they're trading in is against the law. 
completely. Ah, Luthmus said dealer, which is true for drugs, isn't it? Yes, you can a drug a drug dealer. Yeah, drug dealer. Mm -hmm. But I so I associate a drug dealer with more on the street, mm -hmm. perhaps. And I, the word we're looking for, I think it's a bigger thing. It's more international, um, with more money. Mm -hmm. so, and remember, it's also for people, not just drugs. Also, people. people yeah, Hema's saying dealing as well. That yeah, it's true. You do have drug dealers, um, mm -hmm. and that's a crime. But what we're looking for is something bigger, something that involves also people and usually more money. And when I see this word, it always reminds me of cars and lorries and taxis and motorbikes. <laughs> <laughs> Although there's no connection, I think. Well, maybe there is. That's maybe there is a connection. <laughs> Nobody? Uh... <gasps> there's Uncle. Uncle's got it. Yes. But, but not quite. That's close. It. Merche's got it. Merche's close, got but it. no cigar. Merch has got it. Trafficking. Yes, that's the one we're looking for. So, the where are we? Trafficking um, is a crime. Yeah. And the person, Yabir, has got it. Trafficker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, people trafficking and drug trafficking uh, tends to be bigger than, than just dealing. Mm hmm. Okay, Lynn, your turn. Oh, right. Okay. All right. This is an easy one. So everybody has to be ready. I think this is easy. This is the word for stealing things in general. When somebody steals something, when they take it without your permission. Christine lost connection, but she's back again. That's good. Welcome back, Christine. Yeah, now we're going into words that are all connected to stealing in some way. So we've got some words now that have some connection to stealing things. There are quite a few words in English for stealing. Uh, okay. Angel, Angel said rubber. You've made a mistake with the spelling there because of Yeah, rubber. rubber's goma. The way you've spelt it there, Angel, that's goma. Rubber is what you do to erase... Uh, Erase your pencil. Mm -hmm. Luthma has said thief. And that's true, isn't it? That's correct, Craig? Yes, that's correct. Thief for the person. But what do we call the crime? What's the crime? Does anyone know the crime? Cello. Yep, Seth. cello's got it. Well done, cello. Fantastic. So mm -hmm. theft is a crime. And thief is the person. Mm -hmm. Well done. All right. Now, there's a few other words that people have put up there, and they will be coming in future questions, and we'll see the difference between them. Okay. Yeah, so focus on the definitions because they will help you to understand the differences between these words. So the next one is where you steal a large amount of money with force of violence, maybe with a gun or a weapon, usually from a bank or a shop. You could steal jewelry, for example, gold, silver jewelry, pearls, necklaces, rings, diamonds, or money from a bank. So it's stealing as well, but there's a specific name for stealing from a bank or a shop or a post office. Mm-hmm something like that so the crime and the criminal any ideas could also break into an office not a home no not a home that's coming that's later mm -hmm. there we go esther's think, got uh, it i think esther. and well done, Christine Esther. as well. Very Christine. good. Uh huh. So, yeah, robbery, robbery, and a robber. So, you have a bank robber, that's a strong collocation, a mm -hmm. bank robber. And again, that word commit for the collocation to commit robbery, robbery. commit uh -huh. theft, commit rape, commit murder, lots mm -hmm. of collocations with commit in mm -hmm. crime. 
And if you're a victim, you can say, my shop got robbed or my shop was robbed or the bank was robbed in the passive. Mm -hmm. When you're describing yep. what happened to the victim. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was very close uh, with the word robber, robber. They're very, very close. Robber is the goma and robber is the, the person who steals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. My turn? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this is the one before the robbery and the robber was when you uh, steal things from a shop or a bank. And this one is when somebody breaks into your house to steal things from your house. For your flat. Or you, could you say that this for the office or, or as well, or would you use robbery for an office? More, more robbery, I think. More robbery, isn't it? It's This is more yeah. personal. It's more where you live, uh -huh. where your home is. Yes. I think so, yeah. Yep, Hema's got it. Well done, Hema. Uh huh. Burglary and the the person, Hema. Do you know the person? Burglary. Yeah, lots of people are getting it now. Okay, there you are. Burglary and burglar. 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 Uh -huh. Um, that That's AR the at the end of burglar is the same pronunciation as ER or OR. It's the uh sound burglar burglar okay. and burglary burglary uh -huh. stress the first syllable burglary so burglary. we've been burgled as lynn said it's often used in the passive uh, i was burgled they stole some money i was mm -hmm. burgled have you ever been burgled me no no me, me <laughs> neither oh actually yeah what my family when i lived in the uk i was very very young maybe six or seven years old uh -huh. and our house was burgled. Yeah. They didn't steal. We didn't have much. They didn't steal much, but they broke in <laughs> through had, the window. We had a funny story with the neighbors and somebody tried to burgle them when they were asleep. But what they didn't realize was that the window they were trying to get into was actually the bedroom. And the person, my neighbor, woke up and he woke his wife up and he said, shh. And he got out of bed really carefully and the man the burglar was halfway through the window and all he had to do was hold him until his wife called the police because he couldn't <laughs> <laughs> he was hanging over the window <laughs> but that was years ago so I, that's a funny story but um, not, not the brightest light in the harbor <laughs> and then you sometimes read stories in the news about burglars who get hungry halfway through and they start eating eating and in the kitchen yeah. back and then they get caught so yeah. I think a lot of people who burger they're not professionals sometimes <laughs> <laughs> maybe the robbers the bank robbers they have more preparation maybe okay so also on stealing with the idea of stealing our next words are the people who steal something from a shop so you go into a shop and when no one's looking, you you take something, put it in your pocket and walk out of the shop. So there's a specific word in English for the crime and the criminal. And I like this word as well. I, I quite like this word. It's uh, And I think it's, it's quite easy to remember. Again, if you create a picture in your mind, an image of this word. So it's specifically stealing from a shop or a supermarket um, and then just walking out. Mm -hmm. It's not with violence because when we talked about robbery, robbery is more with violence, with guns, isn't it, in a shop? Yeah. But this one is very secretive. Christine is on fire today. She's getting all of them. Well done, Christine. <laughs> Fantastic. So, yeah, it's shoplifting. Uh -huh. Imagine like uh, lifting, lifting up the shop, uh, shop, and then walking away with all of the shop. Shoplifting is the crime, and shoplifter is the criminal. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now this is another lovely word. I love this word too. So I like the image of the shoplifting, and this one is lovely. If you're in a crowded place, 
and somebody steals without you noticing your wallet or your purse from your pocket or from your bag and they just take it out and often you don't notice it's gone until much later. What crime and what criminal is that? Olga's just joined us. Why are you late, Olga? What have you been doing that you missed half an hour? <laughs> Where have you been? This is not good enough, Olga. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Esther's got it. Fantastic. Yeah. That was very, very quick. Well done, Esther. Pickpocketing and pickpocket. Uh -huh. And that's really visual, isn't it? Because your pocket is where you keep your wallet and somebody picks it out of the out of the pocket pickpocketing and pickpocket uh -huh. again i think that's quite difficult for spanish speakers to pronounce because of the consonant clusters in there and the con there's so many consonants pickpocket pickpocket Pick uh-huh yeah possibly uh-huh okay so again Ooh, another is a big word there victor said larceny Larceny. larceny is a crime but i don't know what it means do you it's american english isn't it larceny grand yeah. larceny it's more used it's used more in american english is it's the theft of personal property it, uh -huh. uh, according to google it's uh, yeah. in english law larceny was replaced in it oh that's no what's the difference between theft and larceny they're often used synonymously so together but they're not the same larceny is a smaller crime while theft is seen as a more serious crime. Yeah. And it depends on the state where you live. So, yes, it's definitely connected more to American yeah. English. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because in British English, I don't, you don't hear people talking about larceny. No. Uh huh. That's an more okay. American English word. Okay, it's me. So, again, with stealing, this is where you attack somebody in the street to steal something. So maybe you, the criminal pulls a knife, maybe a gun, give me your wallet, give me your money, give me your jewellery, and it happens in the streets. And it's usually a crime with violence. So as Lynn said, you know, pickpocketing or shoplifting is not a violent, really a violent crime, but this is often a violent crime. So anybody know that? attacking someone often in the street with the idea to rob them uh, i think take them Emma has it can you see Emma has it him has got one of she's got the person no Emma said vandal no vandals but it's, it's right go oh yeah. yeah sorry yeah right wait <laughs> mugger 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 is the person uh-huh and the crime the crime. Victor says assault, which it is as well. That's also the, the crime. But from the word mugger, the crime is mugging. Mugging. Mm -hmm. And the verb to mug. To mug. Uh -huh. Do you know anyone who has been mugged? Oh, I've, got, I've been mugged. I realized that I was preparing. I've been mugged five times in my life. You're joking. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> in the but I'm street. I'm still here. Yeah, I'm still here. So I was lucky, just like you with the carjacking. But I've actually been mugged five times. Yeah. Have you been mugged in Spain? I've No, no. But I've been mugged in um, Britain twice, in Africa twice. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Uh -huh. But I was okay. <laughs> you survived. I survived, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Two more. I think uh, we've got no, this is the last one. The last one in the quiz. All right. Right. Yeah, the last one. This is for me, Craig? Yep. Okay, right. So when there was, I wonder if anybody can here's a test for you. Can you remember what the word was that we learned earlier about when there is a demonstration on the streets that begins to become violent and there's a lot of problems? Can anybody remember what that word was? That crime. When, when people attack the police or they damage property. We had it earlier. We'll see if you're paying attention. Uh, 
earlier Hema said vandal which yes is damaging property but that's not what we're looking for we're looking for the crime that was connected to George Floyd black there lives matter Esther's got it well done Esther riot okay now during a riot sometimes shops the glass on the shops becomes broken in the riot people are actually fighting and then the the shops suddenly the glass windows break and then there are people who take advantage of that moment and they run into the shops in order to steal the property now their intention originally was not to rob the shop but they see that the shop is open they see that nobody is looking and so they decide to go in and take the things that they find. Do you know the word for that crime and the person who commits it? And on the news, you often see people walking out of shops with big plasma TVs <laughs> and computers <laughs> looking around for the police and running away with valuable They're running away. Uh -huh. They're things. just trying to take advantage of the, of the situation, of the breakdown in the law and order and they're trying to take advantage and they, they, they decide to steal. But it hasn't been premeditated. Whereas for a robbery, you think about it beforehand. It's premeditated. Anybody got that? Victor says with a y sound. Riot. No. Riot. I riot, think he's speaking yes. about riot. Riot. Uh -huh. Yeah. Felipe has it. Looting. 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 Yep. Well done. Looting. And Luthma said plunder. Ah interesting that goes together often with looting looting plunder uh, christine she's listened to it so many times but she can't remember the name but victor's <laughs> got it right looter and felipe the crime looting uh -huh. okay. and interestingly loot is also slang for money if you steal some loot that's not a very common word but it's it's slang it's colloquial word for money loot did you bring the loot did you bring the, did you steal the loot very good. Okay, that's it. Um, before we go, though, we do have a few more words to compare and explain the difference to. So we're going to speak about the difference between some words that may be confusing for you. So the difference, for example, between to steal and to rob, Lynn, what's, mm -hmm. what's mainly collocation, isn't it? I think so, yeah. And I think that when we, I mean, they both are, are related, but I think that um, when we say rob, it, it means it focuses more on the place or the person. So you rob a bank or you rob somebody. And when we use the verb to steal, we're usually talking about the objects. So the focus is on the objects. You steal money, you steal jewelry. Okay but you rob a place or a person and you steal something. Okay. I think that's, but they're exactly. very close. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. And the next one, Craig. Yeah. Murder. The next there's three here, murder, manslaughter, and assassination are very similar. And again, that collocation with commit is very common. So a person who commits murder kills somebody intentionally. They do it on purpose manslaughter you kill someone but maybe it was an accident maybe you're arguing and you push them and they fall downstairs and they die but you didn't mean your intention wasn't to kill them so murder generally has a more severe sentence you go to prison for longer when you commit murder the manslaughter and assassination is also very similar. The criminal is an assassin, and the verb is to assassinate, and it's to murder someone important. So you assassinate a president, for example, assassinate a prime minister, somebody who's very important. So that's basically the difference. Murder, you, you, you kill someone intentionally. Manslaughter, it's an accident, an assassination. It's an important person. And Ava's just mentioned the word homicide. Now, we hear the word homicide a lot on the crime, the crime shows, the crime 
um, theories that we all watch, like CSI and things like that. But it's an American word, homicide. We don't really use it very much, do we, in Britain? And I think homicide is murder. Is that right, Craig? Yeah, yeah. Homicide is murder. And it's similar to suicide. So again, commit, commit homicide, commit suicide. And again, it's more American English than British English. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got a question from Christine. She said, what's the difference between loot and plunder? Any idea? I'm not sure. I know they're very, they're very, it's a very strong a combination uh, of words. Um, loot, looting is stealing money, isn't it? No, I think looting is what we described in shops, like the plasma TV and things. Yeah, that's the loot. And I think I remember the word plunder more from novels, you know? It's it's a more sort of historical literary word. Would you say that? The dictionary definition is rob robbing the rob sorry, <laughs> to rob <laughs> goods or to steal goods or valuables by force, as in yeah. war, hostile raids, etc. So yes, it's violent, isn't it? To uh, plunder like a town. Vikings. Would you say that? You know, the Vikings. Yes. When the Vikings came to Britain and they went in and they would say plunder, would they? Yes, and it's connected definitely to war, for example, where an invasion and hostile raids. Mm -hmm. And it's often used, as you say, in history. So the Vikings plundered the village. Um, looting is more modern, I think, with shops and uh -huh. businesses. Yeah. And plunder more connected with war and invasions yeah yeah uh -huh. good Possibly. question yeah okay uh next one for me jail and prison is that right yeah just one second while i find it what's the difference between jail and prison between jail and prison <laughs> i had to look this one up <laughs> that's so a tricky it's a tricky one isn't it Prepared, yeah, because we use both words, jail and prison, in British English, definitely. And um, but then I found the answer on good old Google, yeah. And, <laughs> and then I thought, yes, that's it. <laughs> so basically, prison they're both places where you are, you, your freedom has been taken away, you're locked in a cell in jail and in prison. But the difference is, is that if you're in prison, it's because you have been convicted and found guilty of a crime. So you've been convicted in a court of law and then they send you to prison. Now, often people use jail and they say, ah, he's convicted and he's sent to jail. That's also OK. But we also use the word jail for the place where maybe the police arrest you because they catch you on the street doing something wrong and they decide to hold you maybe for a day or two until they decide to charge you with a crime. And then the place where you are held, which is often usually not in the prison, it's often in the police station, that's where the cell is, then that is often called the jail, all right? So jail, Jail is for you if you haven't been convicted or found guilty yet. And prison or jail is for when you're convicted. You can use both words for after you've been convicted. Yeah. And as Luthma says, jail is yes, tempor a temporary thing often yeah. because in, mm -hmm. in Britain or in, in, in the UK, they might say you're being held in custody. Mm -hmm. And I think apart from what, what Lynn said, I'd add that maybe it's more used in American English, jailhouse rock, Elvis Presley, <laughs> um, who's in the, it's, it's more, it tends to be used more in American English. I, I don't think we use it as much. Oh, I, uh, you'd be surprised because I'm from yeah? the North and we say people are in jail. I say he's oh, okay. in jail. Uh -huh. So it's a London, in London then maybe it's maybe not so used. And maybe okay. it's from Monopoly as well. Remember the game Monopoly where it says go to jail. <laughs> go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not connect 200 pounds. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. For you, judge and jury, Craig? Judge and jury, both with that j sound. J, j, j. Judge and the ah 
is the vowel sound. Be careful. Don't say judge. It's judge. Open your mouth. Judge. Judge. The same sound as up that we had before. Judge and jury. Judge is the juez, the person who controls the court and the trial. And jury, the members of the public who decide if the accused person is guilty or innocent. A jury usually has 12 people and they're chosen from the public. And if you are called by the court to go to a trial, then you are on jury service. They call you for jury service. That's have you ever been on jury service? Correct? I haven't. No, I've been to the Old Bailey, which is a really famous court house in London, to see a trial. And mm -hmm. there was a jury in the trial. It was an open court and you could sit in the, I don't think you can now, but years ago you could go to the, the courthouse and see trials mm -hmm. in the public area. Um, and it was really interesting, mm -hmm. really interesting. So judge and jury. Mm -hmm. Next two. Okay. And the la uh, uh, last two. So one for me, trial and court. Yeah. So trial is actually the process where the where the lawyers and the judge are discussing whether you are guilty or not maybe there are witnesses that are called so the whole process which might last a few days a few months that is the trial and the court it's easy is actually the place where it happens where the trial is held i think Anything to add there, Craig? No, that's that's that sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I was just answering some questions in the chat room in the text. There's a question from Christine. How about court and tribunal? Mm. Mm. Well, a tribunal, sure. a tribunal, again, the court is the place. So the tribunal would be closer to the trial. In, in meaning, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the tribunal is also a process, but I think it has lesser, it's for, for lesser offences, a tribunal. For example, if you lose your job and you're not in agreement that the, your employer has sacked you, you might go to a tribunal, which is not a big court with a judge and a jury, it's just a very, very small process where there might be one or two civil servants who try to mediate and you have a tribunal. I think that's a, it seems to be in the lower courts, I think, a tribunal. And a, and a trial is, is one maybe for murder or for a very, very serious offence where it merits having a jury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You often yeah. hear about industrial tribunals That's as well, right. where maybe the government choose a collection of people to judge something. So they, to make a decision to examine something. So court is very general and it um, tries the legal process of the country. But a tribunal could could be a collection of people appointed by the government for a specific purpose as well. Mm -hmm. And also, I think in universities, sometimes they talk about academic tribunals where people actually validate people's work, mm -hmm. you know? So you do a piece of research work and it might actually be judged by people. So it's not necessarily related to crime either, always, I don't think. Uh -huh. That's true. So, Quick uh, question. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, somebody, I can't remember the name because it's gone up now, but somebody just mentioned, and I think it's really good, that a uh, jury is the collection of people and the individual people are called jurors. Jurors, yeah, yes. That was Esther. Yeah, great. Well, well done, done, Esther. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Joss is asking, is it going to be recorded? Yes, it's being recorded. It is on Facebook. It will be on Facebook, but of course, it then it goes down tomorrow. It will disappear. But it will be on the Mansion in Glares page as well. We've got a selection of these videos on the Mansion in Glares page. Um, and also, Lynn's going to link to this on her website as well. So we'll give you the details, Joss, at the end. We're nearly finished. I think we've got one more. Uh, this is here. 
because I this is me. Oh yeah, this is confu this is confusing, isn't it? This is confusing. Mm -hmm. So a lawyer is a person who practices law. There's another collocation. We had commit a crime, practice law. When you practice law, that does not mean that you, you don't know how to do it and you're trying to learn how to do it. It <laughs> means that you are qualified to do law. But we don't say do law. We say practice law. That's the collocation. And a lawyer is someone who practices law. In American English, that person is called an advocate. And you often see, especially on business cards of lawyers or on the door of the, of the lawyer, you see advocate at law. So that is the title in North America for a lawyer. Mm -hmm. It gets more complicated. A person in the UK who is qualified as a lawyer to be in court is called a barrister which is what like, christina spotted there she said uh, did she put barrister yeah she I said didn't... what barrister <laughs> that's, yeah that's good because i don't have a card for that so thank you christine uh -huh. barrister yeah that's in british english and that's the person with the wig wig is how do you say wig in spanish peluca, peluca thank you mm -hmm. peluca like the white wig so those lawyers with the black clothes and the white wig in court are barristers. There's another kind of lawyer in the UK who cannot go into court, and that lawyer is called a solicitor. And a solicitor will sell your house and make a will when you die. They do more paperwork, don't they? It's more, yeah, legal more documents, desk legal desk contracts. Uh -huh. renting properties, businesses, that kind of thing. So it's more minor, smaller law. They cannot go in and defend you for murder, for example. So there's solicitor and barrister. <laughs> and it has just written, not a barista. <laughs> no, not a barista. That's a person who makes your coffee. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that would be nice. That's what we all need afterwards. <laughs> Okay, and Ifa has also mentioned that she thinks practice law is weird, yeah, and it, it's it is weird. It's like you said, they're not they're not learning it; they do it. But we also practice medicine as well. Uh -huh. So a lot of the older professions, you say you practice them. Uh -huh. But I also want to point out she's written practice with a C. Now this is a very common spelling mistake, right? Now practice is written with a C, and it's also written with an S. And when it's in a verb, it's written with an S. And when it's a noun, it's written with a C. And the way to remember, this is what I always tell my students, right? Because there are a few words like this in English. And if you're doing exams, the examiners, they pick it up and they'll mark it wrong. So the way to remember is noun starts with N. Verb is V. So N comes before V in the alphabet. C comes before S in the alphabet. So mm. the noun has C and the verb has S. Okay. That's a very good well, – I didn't know that. That's a very good tip, a very good yeah, piece of that. advice Yeah, when you're, do, when, you're, that. when you're doing exams, I'm always crossing it out in all of the proficiencies. <laughs> okay. But that's in, that's in British English. In American English, yes. they spell the noun with, a, with an S, don't they? Possibly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's um, yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. Yeah, Esther, Esther says wig and gown, peluca and vestido. <laughs> and and <laughs> I don't well, know like what gown cape. is. It's like a it's a cape that you, they they do have like a a strange dress that they put over their coat. Uh -huh. It's all connected to tradition and yeah, is, the constitution, uh -huh. etc. Uh -huh. But also when you graduate in Britain, you have a cap and a gown as well. But we're going off the topic. We're no longer in crime. We should stay yeah. in crime. We should stay in crime. And I think that's it. I want to be respectful of, of Lynn's time and your time because we've been with you for an hour. Just before we go, um, we are we Joss asked earlier on about the vocabulary we've been practicing with you. That's practicing with an S, not with a C. So if you want to see the um the vocabulary written down, go to mansioningles.com. There's a section on video. Go to video 
and you'll see a group of videos and this should be there in three or three days two or three days you can see the vocabulary there and also watch the the older ones um and lynn do you want to say something about your website put it like this yeah well i'm a online teacher i just started my business this year to teach online i used to always teach face to face but now with covid we're all online and i really enjoy it and i've created my own company it's called put it like this and you can look at my website put it like this.com if you're interested in classes yeah and okay. i must say the website's very very pretty i'm very jealous of lynn's <laughs> website because she spent quite a lot of time and quite a lot of energy creating it, and it looks lovely. So Thank go you. and have a look. Go and have a look. It's a really, really nice website. Thank and you. Uh, if you are interested in listening to a podcast, I'll remind you that every week we have a podcast over at inglespodcast.com where you can improve your English for free. And I listen to it as well, and I recommend it to everybody. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay you after, Lynn. <laughs> that, I'm trying to I'm trying to get you to this is the final question for the people what am I trying what crime am I trying to commit bribery you know <laughs> I'm obviously not very good because it wasn't obvious <laughs> Anna Anna Laura said drug trafficking <laughs> oh no oh no that was the beginning i'm looking at the wrong side of the comments that's my fault okay all right yeah ever said put it like this thanks you're <laughs> welcome christine thank you yeah. for joining just before we go and, and i want to thank lynn for this idea um we've got some homework for you oh. have you ever committed a crime or been a victim of a crime if you have go over to facebook and write in the chat room tell us a story or even create a video if you're feeling creative you could create a short video and tell us about it and practice your speaking we'd be very interested to know about your crimes your experience with crimes and that's a way to practice the vocabulary that we've been talking about yeah so yeah. thanks ever so much for for being here this week um hopefully we'll be back next week and you'll see on facebook and twitter the day and the time stay safe be careful keep studying english and um see you soon and don't commit any crimes and don't commit any crimes <laughs> oh. take care bye <laughs> bye bye